is brought to you by Bellpack. Bellpack, just perfect. Welcome to The Point of View. This is your favorite current affairs show on television here on The Point of View. We usually will bring guests and interview them, but on some occasions, we just decide to go behind the numbers. Tonight is one of those nights. So a lot of things are happening in the economy. The IMF team did their first mission visit to Ghana. I'm not going to talk about IMF at all. I want to take you around the economy of Ghana in eight charts. It's almost like a book written by a man called Jules Verne. It's titled around the world in 80 days. Tonight's show, we're going around Ghana's economy in eight charts. You don't need to be an economist to understand what I'm coming to do. We'll be with you. Stay with us. Many people think I get whatever I want because I'm a popular actress. But no, that is not true. Me and Pesano, I dear be a me a piano. Me she shame for papa no. And when I find it, I stick to it. My she shame when your bell pack tissues. Bell pack and with T roll. Bell pack T roll. Soft but not weak. Strong but not hard. It is smooth. Me you swa me hot tummy. It's just perfect. Same as the kitchen towel. What's your babwa? What's your paper ye? What's your soaky? It's your mu. It's a paper. One bell pack kitchen towel lasts longer and saves you money. It's time you switch to bell pack today. Say your pocket tissue, table napkin, tea roll, and a kitchen towel. Bell pack is simply the best. It's just perfect. Welcome back. So tonight what we want to do is simple. The Bank of Ghana regularly releases information in relation to the economy of Ghana. And this information is in the form of tables and charts. Well, they released their latest version in May 2023, which included many, many graphs. We've picked eight of the most important and want to use those eight to tell you a story about Ghana's economy. Hopefully to give you better insight so that when we invite the economists and they are speaking, they are big grammar, you get all the things they said. So here are the eight charts the BOG put out. So the basis of this analysis is what the Bank of Ghana put out. The first chart is the monetary policy rate. So you notice the trend. It's going up. It's moving up nicely. This is basically telling you the rate at which one bank lends to the other overnight. It's also an indication of where the Bank of Ghana wants to take inflation. I'll explain this later when we go behind the numbers. So the first rate we'll look at is the monetary policy rate. The second chart the BOG put out, which we think is very important for the economy, is the chart on the exchange rate. It's the exchange rate chart. Now, this is big. Because this is really where many people complain about the economy when things don't go well. Now, that chart as well shows some very interesting trends. Now, for the exchange rate, when it's pointing upwards, it's not good. Right? For the money policy rate as well, when it's pointing upwards, it's not good. You want it to be lower because the exchange rate tells you how much you need to pay to get one dollar using the dollar as the one. So the second chart I'll show you is the exchange rate chart. Now, the third chart is what I call the real composite index of economic activity. Again, that is a summary of economic output in the country. The growth of that is very critical to how our economy does. That chart is trending downwards. You want that chart to trend upwards, but it's trending downwards. So there's a problem there. All right. So we'll deal with that as well. Why is the real composite index of economic activity trending downwards? Because it tells you the short-term dynamics in economic activity, it includes things like the um, manufacturing and also sales. So it's a chart that's supposed to trend upwards, but it's trending downwards. So we'll talk about that. Now, the fourth one is a double chart. We call it the sales of retail 
and VAT collection. This is a very interesting chart. This is a very interesting chart. Now, there are stories behind the shifts in the curve. The red line is telling you how much domestic VAT is being collected in the country from January 2021 to March 2023. The blue line is telling you retail sales. We notice how flat it is. We'll tell you what is going on there. The next one we'll talk about on the show is called job adverts because a lot of people are talking about unemployment. It's the biggest challenge in Ghana. There was a recent poll by Global Info Analytics asking people the most important issue for the election 2024. Majority of the voters said it was jobs. Now, the Bank of Ghana tracks advertisement of new jobs in the economy. And look at that. It's fluctuating. It's not going up. From January 2021, by July 2021, the adverts in the newspapers, the main dailies was up to 4,000. It's come down to below 3,500. We'll talk a bit about that and explain what this means. The next one is number six. This one is very interesting. This, for us, is the most important proxy. It's called cement sales. The most important proxy for uh, the construction sector. Somehow, people are not buying cement as much. Cement sales are declining. What does that mean for the economy of Ghana? We'll talk about that. Then the next one is the port activity. Tema Takrade. Look at that. It's coming down. Why is port activity coming down? There's a story actually today, 19th June, in the Herald that's explaining this. And I'll read that story to you. But not everything is negative. The last chart will show you makes me very excited. Passenger arrivals. Three weeks ago, I was at Pedriasi Lodge. The president launched the export, sorry, the, the tourism, presidential tourism agenda. And a lot of that tourism agenda is based on this. So whatever is happening in the economy, look at this line. People are coming to Ghana a lot, right? And this is not, this is over two years. So clearly, there's something positive going on here. I'll come back to this chart, but I want to take you into the, the presentation of why this is important. So, as I said, there are eight specific things that will tell us where we are as a country. Let me start the municipal policy rate. So, this rate, I'm going to take you to 20 years. So, what the BOG showed us in the chart I showed you earlier was just a year and a half. My team has gone all the way to November 2002. I don't know where you were. I was in the second year of my, the university at Legon, Kufo was president. Now, this rate shows a number of things. This is the rate at which a bank lends to another bank in relation to their overnight operations, right? But it's also a sign of where the government, particularly the central bank, wants to take inflation. So the higher the MPC rate, it means that they see inflation is a problem. So if they keep increasing the MPC rate, they are not happy with inflation. So they keep raising the rate to mop up excess liquidity. Right? This is basic monetary economics. Now, there are three stories here. So this is how it's behaved since Kufu, Mills, Mahama, Akufuado. Now, first point, the average monetary policy rate is 18.5%. Now, this also means that the minimum amount a bank will give you as exchange rates will be higher than this because if a bank will lend to another bank at 18% overnight, there's no way they're going to lend you that same amount or at that same rate. So an average MPC rate of 18.5% tells you that the average interest rate that citizens pay is much higher. All right. Now, here's the big story. The highest since 2002 is where we are now. The most recent one, May. Look at that, almost 30%. So in 20 years, the current monetary policy rate is the highest. And as I said, the higher the rate, the worse for people. So it's not a good thing. It's not a good story. Right? That if a bank wants to lend to another bank, it's 30%. 30%. That, that's, that's pretty serious. 29.5%. The MPC rate. Indeed, there are some notes I put here. It's a short-term, often overnight rate that banks charge one another to borrow funds. Now, when the Bank of Ghana feels that inflation is getting high, they raise the rate. All right. What is the other story here? Take a look of this chart. So you notice that it was high before 2002, came all the way down and went up a bit. Came all the way down, went up a bit. There's another story there. 
Every time it goes up, something is happening. Now, this is 2008 to 2009. What's going on here? Kufo is handing over to Mills. So election year, it goes up. Another important junction, 2012 to 2013. This is the same government, so it doesn't go that much up. So it's Mills to Mahama. And then another height, Mahama to Akufuado. So you notice that for this MPC, and I'm not saying the central bank looks at the elections, but for some reason, for the past 21 years, every election year, you see a trough, a, a, a peak. And it's no surprise that we are fast approaching a peak. So it's very likely that it's going to go up till election 2024 before it starts coming down. Just looking at this trend. This is very interesting. So this rate keeps going up, particularly when the, the central bank feels that inflation is a big problem. And it's, it's not a positive story that in the past 21 years, what we are being told is the rate is the highest. This is, this is not a very good thing. All right. It peaks during election years. This is the highest on record since 2020, 2002. Now, let me move to the next. Of course, this is Dr. the governor. He leads the MPC. He used to be the head of research. And this is not really about him, but I just wanted to let you know that he and his team set this. So this is Dr. Ernest Yedu Addison. He used to be the head of research at the, the Central Bank. Wonderful. Let's go to the next one. Now, this one is what I call... The real composite index of economic activity. Now, this is a, a short term show of economic activity. So, it includes things like manufacturing output, retail sales, and other things. So, if you want to see how the economy is doing over the short term, you need to look at this figure. All right? What do we have here? January, and again, this is a comparison year on year, it's a year on year figure. So, 4.2 means that. Real composite index of economic activity for January 2022 is 4.2% better than it was the previous year, right? So February, 4.4% better than the previous year. March, 46 better than the previous year. Then it starts coming down. August 2022, it hits negative. November, negative 6. It gets to a very low dip. January 2021, 2023, it's 7.6, right? So obviously, something happened before August. It's like there's a, a, a huge turn in fortunes from positive to negative. And within the negatives as well, November, December, January, really bad. Things start picking up February, March, and it's on its way up. Now... What does this tell us? Well, before we go, this is really this guy in the sense that he's a trade minister and industrial growth is under his remit. So, and by the way, he resigned in January for what that's worth. We are not, we are not drawing a link. We are not saying he's the person in charge of this. But if the governor of the central bank is the guy to talk to when it comes to the, the first slide, obviously your trade minister, of course, there's a new trade minister now. It's called Katie Hammond, but I thought it was interesting to bring Alan in here. Now, this one is the big one. This one is big. This one is big, the exchange rate. Now, the exchange rate, for many people, is the most important economic indicator in Ghana because Ghana is an import-led economy. Indeed, the vice president said to us in lectures that if the economy is not doing well, the exchange rate will expose you. So the exchange rate is actually a very important indicator in the economy. Let's look at how it's been behaving in the past few months. So we started from January 2022. Look at that. So you notice that in March there was a problem. Usually the exchange rates would dip in March because a lot of our multinational corporations will repatriate their profit into whichever country they are coming from in March. So when the fiscal year ends and the big, big companies repatriate their profits to their mother countries, the exchange rate takes a hit. So that's the first issue here. It's March. But it's been stable, right? It's been very stable up until September 2022. Then look at that. Boom. It's almost like the exchange rate just hit a major shock. 
What happened here? Well, the answer is in the United States of America. The head of the Fed, the central bank in the U.S. is called Janet Yellen. They also had inflation, so their central bank decided to increase their interest rates. As soon as American interest rates go up, portfolio investors in many developing countries move their investments in countries like Ghana back into more advanced markets. It simply means that the U.S. becomes an attractive investment destination for many of these investors. So they would remove their money, liquidate, and move to the U.S. Now that reduces the value of the CD and makes the dollar more expensive. And because Ghana imports a lot, we need to buy dollars to import what we import, and the BOG doesn't have enough dollars in reserve to strengthen the city. So this is what happens. So this is Janet Yellen taking us all the way to December. Look at that. The city, you could buy a dollar for six cities in January. By October, you could buy it for eight cities. By November, you could buy it for 13.5 cities. That's unfathomable. From six cities in January to seven cities in March to eight cities, nine cities in September to almost 14 cities in November. This is incredible. Stayed at 14 cities up to Christmas. And then right after Christmas, it came down, boom, to eight. Rose gradually again is now 11. So you can buy the dollar for 11 11 Ghana cities. This is where it is on average. Now, what, first, first, first part of call is that because the dollar is the currency, the exchange is an important figure in Ghana, I think the economic management team takes responsibility for it. So I think Dr. Bamiya will live or die by the dollar. By that I mean that where the currency exchange rate is, it will be a judgment. He brought the dollar exchange rate into the discussion. 2014, 2015 brought it into the discussion. Later on, when they took power in 2017, a few days after, I think 100 days, he said they had locked the dollar and put it in his pocket. So a lot of people attribute what happens to the dollar team. Although all the things I've said is true, the head of the monetary policy committee, uh, sorry, the head of the economic management team, the vice president, will take responsibility. So now it's stabilized at 11. It's stabilized at 11. We would hope that with the IMF program coming in, Ghana City is going to further strengthen. It's probably going to come down a bit to inure to its benefit. But I, I sincerely think that the, the U.S. dollar exchange rate is going to be a very important factor in the way our economy goes in a long time. We've done some, we've done some interesting um, extrapolation. So we're saying that is there a relationship between economic growth, economic activity, and the U.S. dollar exchange rates? Well, we superimposed the FX performance on the previous chart. And what did we get? Well, what we got was a very interesting chart. Check it out. <laughs> so, and I'm not saying one determines the other, but it's very interesting to see that. In, and I think this is very important for you to reflect on. A stable currency, economic output, economic activity is positive. Instability in currency, economic activity is negative. This is very, very important for you to think about. Right? Now, we are not saying this is causing this or this is causing this. We are not saying this. But we're just saying that take a look at it closely. And this is January last year all the way to March this year. Think about it. This is your composite index of economic activity green positive is growing things are going well august boom negative look at our currency stable 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 dip Brrr. so think about this which one is causing which and now i bring these two because of course if you follow the politics as well there's been a lot of discussion about whose record who ran on and all of those things you can attribute, if you, if, you want, if you want to push this, you could say the trade minister's role is industrial growth because he's been trade minister for the whole of Akufuado's government. So, 
you can use these charts as a proxy for him. The vice president, on the other hand, has been the guy who's been taking all the plaudits for the currency when it's good. Definitely takes the blame when it's bad. But you see that there's a similarity, that the two are closely interlinked. So I think that's going to be very interesting. So if, for example, we had a debate between the two men, I would ask them to tell me, to ex would ask them to explain this. I'll ask them whether it's this that caused this or this that caused that. One of them is in charge of this, the other is in charge of that. But I think it's very interesting to have the two leading indicators, in my view, because industrial growth is a very critical part of a developing economy. And this composite index of economic activity, I think the most important driver is industrial growth. I stand to be corrected. But reflect on this for a while, right? I'll, let's take you back a bit to just make the point again. So this is what we are saying. We are saying that this is how your CD has been faring against the dollar since January. Okay? And we're also saying that this is how your economic activity has been behaving since January. And we are saying when we put the two together, they are closely related. This is, this is the story for the first part of the show. And this one, this one is worth a thousand news stories. Mind you, Tonight's show is trying to make more sense of the Bank of Ghana's data. This is what the Bank of Ghana gave us in May. The currency exchange rate is 10.6, by the way. So that's a bit lower than 11. And of course, the real CEIE is coming down. It's below, it's below zero. It's negative. That's not good. We'll take a short break. When we come back, I'm going to go into other indicators. Don't forget, the show tonight is simple. We are going around Ghana's economy in eight charts. We've dealt with three already. We've spoken about the monetary policy rate, which is at an all-time high in 20 years. I mean, since 2002, 29.5 is the highest. We've also shown you the relationship between the exchange rate and the composite index of economic activity. When we come back, we'll talk about retail sales and VAT. We'll talk about job adverts. And who's buying cement and who's not? And why Ghana Sports is not doing too well? Stay with us. With ATL, you can never be out of style. ATL, bringing fabric to life. Pepsodent introduces charcoal and lemon essence. The unique combination of natural essences whitens teeth naturally for you and family because every smile matters. New Pepsodent Herbal. Introducing a unique combination of herbal extracts in an antibacterial toothpaste for strong teeth and healthy gums that protects your family and you. Every smile matters. Welcome back tonight on The Point of View. We're going around the economy of Ghana in eight charts. The first chart is the monetary policy rate, highest in 20 one year, 29.5. Second chart is what we call the exchange rate. Big, big dip in Ghana's CD currency, August, September, all the way to December 2022. Recovered is now around 11 CDs to the dollar. We hope it stays same or even gets further down. Third chart is what we call the real index of economic activity. Somehow in August, it became negative. It was positive all the way from January. And we'll show you the link between the two. The next one, I think is very interesting, is 
a two-in-one chart that the BOG put out, and I think you can put it back again. It's called the Retail Sales and VAT chart. This is very interesting, right? Now, why is this interesting? This is retail sales. This is what people who do retail sell, okay? Now, VAT is supposed to be dependent on how much people sell. For some reason, we collect more VAT than retail, but there's a, a simple explanation for this. The, this is so because we charge VAT not just on retail, but also on other uh, levels of production, manufacturing, and all those things. That's point number one. Point number two, retail is under-recorded because there are three types of retail. You have retail, Makola, Kantamantu, KJTR. This is open market. That's about 60%. We suspect the assumptions the BOG used to collect, this doesn't capture a lot of those. Second one is what we call the community retail. So you go to a corner shop in your area, and that's about 35% of the market. Now, the top end is what you call modern retail, Melcom, Melcom Plus, P Palace, China Mall. That's just 5%. We suspect that a lot of this data does not include this. So that's the first point. But the other thing we notice is that this is growing much higher than this. Now, I, I want to explain based on something I will show you here. So why is this happening? Well, we think that the relationship the, the GRA has done something very interesting. In October 2022, the GRA introduced something called the EVAT. The EVAT. Prior to this, a lot of companies were declaring different things. So you can have a big retail chain. People go and buy and pay VAT, but somehow the GRA doesn't get that revenue. But we think the GRA has, since the introduction of the EVAT in October 2022, found a way of bringing people who were evading tax into the tax net. Now, this is why there's a spike, September, October, boom, all the way to Christmas. Now, there was a dip because there was a backlash, particularly in the Ashanti region. Remember, there were, I remember uh, uh, there were at press conferences, people like um, the national organizer of the MPP were not happy that GRA had come to uh, a doom to implement EVAT, Kumasi businessmen were complaining that they were being overtaxed. We think that that affected the GRA's momentum a bit, but they've picked up again. So when they say Ghanaians are not paying tax, they may have a point, right? Because you have, you have a very sort of gradually increasing VAT curve. And then in October, when you introduce your EVAT, it goes up. And the EVAT is being implemented on three levels. So large taxpayers, medium taxpayers, and small taxpayers. And in fact, they've not even finished the EVAT. So, so it seems to me, it seems to us in, on the team, that the good performance of domestic VAT with flat retail notwithstanding is because of the EVAT. What you have introduced. And I think this is one of the most positive things that have happened in this economy. So that a lot of companies that prior to were not paying proper tax are being accounted for. We, we don't like this dip because if you look at the IMF program and all the things, revenue has to increase. So this dip was probably because of the political backlash, but it's trending upwards. So this is fantastic. And I think we need to commend the, the finance ministry because they, of course, supervise the GRA and they've pushed this EVA thing through the backlash notwithstanding. Yes, there is a challenge with this because if this were captured better, and indeed in many advanced countries, for example, in China, last week Bloomberg was reporting that the economic growth of China for the next quarter was going to dip because retail sales had not performed to expectation. In fact, they used two things. They used retail sales and industrial output, the first one we spoke about. So if, if people are not buying are not buying rice, food. So if you go into retail sales, the sectors are food predominantly. Then you have things like the delivery. Then you have clothing. Then you have fashion wear, cosmetics. All of those things that people buy help the economy to grow. So if this is flat, maybe the Bank of Ghana has to tell us why the... And, and look at it, Christmas. So you see, there's a story here. People don't buy, people don't buy. In November, they buy, boom. After Christmas, they go back to their old habits. They don't buy, they don't buy, they buy Christmas, boom. So there's, a, there's, there's something to be said about acting. So for example, Easter. If you want to push growth, maybe Easter, you go up a bit. 
create more festivals. So you can tell that there's, there's actually sense to the numbers. So when you see, it's not like just some number. This is Christmas effect. This is so a lot of the news we report, that seems like very esoteric. There's actually a method to the madness. The total VAT collections. So total VAT is increasing much faster than retail is increasing. All right. So and that again doesn't make sense. But I I don't think this show is to explain all of this. Total direct taxes between January 2022. Retail sales. Okay. So cumulatively, total domestic VAT for the first quarter went up by close to 80 percent. All right. Total. Domestic VAT went up by close to 80%. So the GRA is doing well. That's about 1.8 billion. Retail sales increased by about 45%. So it's growing slower than uh, VAT. And by the way, inflation is around 40%. So if inflation is around 40% and retail sales is 44%, real growth in retail sales. In fact, the last inflation figure was what? 42%. So the real growth is about just 2%. This is what economists mean by real growth. So the nominal growth in retail is 44%. If you adjust it for inflation, it's a very low number. That's what we mean. So every growth, you, you adjust it for inflation. So inflation is a big bad devil. I didn't even show inflation, which also explains why the Bank of Ghana has been increasing the multi policy rate. Quick comment on that, though. If inflation is caused by excess money in the system, increasing the monetary policy rate makes sense. But inflation has two causes. There's something called demand pool inflation, which is what I just spoke about, where there's excess money chasing fewer goods. But there's also something called cost push inflation. When you go and import parts for a product, because you import them in dollars, the cost of the part will make the cost of the end product higher. That the Monetary Policy Committee cannot control. So if your inflation is caused by supply issues, raising the interest rate alone will not solve it. So that's the inflation point. It's very important. So a lot of people feel that the central bank's monetary policy committee's 29.5% is counterproductive because it's not just because we have too much money in the system. It's also because a lot of our inputs are imported. So we are importing, for example, we import $2, $2, two billion dollars worth of food, right? Every year, $2 billion worth of food. We import $1 billion worth of finished petroleum products. That's $3 billion in a year, just two products, same as the IMF is giving you. Now, if you are importing that, if the cost of the, those items or your exchange rate falls and the dollar is more expensive, you are importing inflation. And the central bank's 29%, 30% will not solve that. So there must be a supply-side response to a supply-side cost. But that's not what we are focused on today. So people are not buying as quickly as the people are collecting taxes from us. We have to think about that and talk about that in a more sustained way. All right, so let's now move to the next one. Of course, so this is the guy, very interesting. IMF, he addressed a press conference yesterday. IMF mission have left town. They will come again in November, but they've done their first visit. They've promised us together with other monies coming in from bilateral donors, between 2023 and 2026, we are going to get about $6.5 billion. That's good. So the IMF program was not very popular, but I think they've managed the, the occasion pretty well. Dr. Nemo Thompson has an article, who's, and he says, a lot of the policy criticisms of the IMF will not help us in the long run if we don't change our ways. We agree with that. But we still think that if you look at what's happening with VAT, tax collection, they've pushed some very unpopular taxes. Right? There was a, a, about three taxes started in May. The excise tax, which a lot of people did not like, the income tax amendment, and then the Ghana growth tax, which is 5% profit before tax, or tax before profit. They will tax your, 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 your pre-tax profit. <laughs> How does it make sense? I don't know. So it may not be popular, but it seems to be working. That's what I'm saying. It's not a popular decision. All the industries, Guta, AGI, they all complain. They still push it through. They pass all the three taxes. And you can see the benefits are coming through. Whether it will dampen economic growth, only time will tell. So a lot of times the government raises revenue and everybody else suffers. So watch this space is what I'll say. The next thing I'm going to look at, 
I think for many people is the most important thing. Irrespective of what the government says, people need work to do. Job growth. All right? Now, there are many ways of measuring job growth. You can look at unemployment rate. Our unemployment rate doesn't really capture the real situation. It's below 10%. The highest it's gone to is about 13. But the Bank of Ghana, nonetheless, have a system they use. They call it the advertised jobs. The number of jobs advertised in selected print, the daily graphic, and on online media, which partially gauges labor demand in the economy. So if you take the newspaper and you see a lot of opportunities being put out there, you can tell that it's opportunity for job growth. Now, the picture is not good. Between April last year and April this year, the number of job adverts has dipped by 7%. That's not good. If you go to this chart, the job chart, it's a very checkered chart. Please move there for me. The job chart on the big screen is very... That tells you that there's a lot of... telling you that it's, it's contracting. Jobs are not moving forward the way we expect them to move. Jobs are not moving the way we expect them to move. Look at that, from 2007 to 2005. Of course, this under represents the jobs. A lot of jobs, nobody advertises them. But still, there's a problem there. Right? So your number of advertised jobs is shrinking. On a month-on-month -month basis, the number of job vacancies went down by 6.3%. That's not good. You expect job, job opportunities to be going up. But that tells you the economy is struggling. And cumulatively for the first four months of this year, the total number of advertised jobs declined by almost 3% from 11,000 to 10,700 compared to the same period, 2022. Why that is happening, we do not know. The job situation from January last year to this year it's also the same. It's very checkered. It's not looking positive at all. We are not happy with that. Now, this is a very interesting one. This is a very interesting one. This is interesting because just today, the Herald put out a story. I'm going to read the story for you before I come to the chat, which tells you that we are actually onto something. So, Herald on 19th June, story says, Ghana's killer port taxes are forcing cargo to Togo. I'm just going to read a story uh, from the Herald. Chamber of Freight for this cry. It says, The Chamber of Freight and Trade is lamenting over Ghana's loss of significant taxes and levies imposed on imports by the government. There are On this when we showed you the tax build up on an imported car not looking empty and this comes as some businesses are also over excessive taxation mr sefa said this while speaking on dh1 tv's state of affairs with francis aban what really is happening within the freight and trade industry is troubling. What we are hearing now is that a lot of the vessels and cargo traffic is shifting to our neighbors. That is the Lome port. And by the way, this is, this is if you look at, so this is um, 2021 January, a, bit, a little over 60,000 tons, goes to about 71,000 tons by June. And it's coming down, coming down, coming down, coming down, coming down. So that's the port situation. And it's the same on our screen here. The port situation is the same on our screen here. Now, what does the story say? It says, there are too many fees and charges that are being levied on the importer by so many different agencies. Every agency working in the port space is milking the importer. And the trader of the small money they have and whatever the cost of doing business and whenever the cost of doing business in your ports keep rising 
and going up, business people always find the cheaper alternative at the port, Mr. Amphosefa said. Meanwhile, the Vehicle and Asset Dealers Association of Ghana has accused the government of a deliberate ploy to collapse the import sector. Speaking of the same program, Executive Member of VUDAG, Clifford Ansu, said, although the Ghana Ports and Harbour in March summoned a meeting of all stakeholders in a bid to find solutions to the port challenges, the issue only worsened and aligned challenges are beyond the price of the GPHA. He called for the abolishment of the COVID-19 health recovery levy and special import levy in the same budget review if the government is committed to seeing the ports bounce back. So this is January 2021 to January 2023. It's trending downwards. And this, look at that, port activity is coming down. International trade at the two main ports, Tema and Takade, is measured by laden content. year on year percent so your port is not doing well and mind you what you are gaining by tax in VAT if your port is not doing well you are losing because a lot of our taxes our tax revenue comes from the port so if people are not bringing their goods to the term and attack credit port Revenue is going to go down. So that's why I said the government should review its policies well. You may increase all the charges. You can have 20 taxes at the port. But if the container traffic reduces, the amount of money you get reduces. In the same way, you can increase your VAT and get more revenue. But if companies fold up and collapse and leave the country, at the end of the day, there's nothing to tax. So the government has to combine its revenue measures with measures that enhance productivity. And this is not a very good picture of where we are as an economy, as evidenced by this. I wish I could go back and show you the unemployment number quickly before, if you can go before I go to my next slide. The unemployment uh, figure, yes, job adverts, right? So again, 2021, this was very good, 2021, sept, uh, uh, what do you call it, July, then coming down. So there's something wrong here. We're still on the point of view. When I come back, I'm going to show you two final slides. I'm going to show you two final slides. One is on cement. Cement. Very important, cement. And the last one is a positive story on passenger arrivals to Ghana. What do those two mean for our economy going forward? The point of view tonight is taking you across Ghana's economy in eight simple charts. We hope you're not complicating matters at all. We're trying to get you to understand what the real stories behind the charts are. Stay with us. Finally, anyone can become a household. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> you will flip a real estate gaming platform that allows you to play and stand a chance of winning a house or cash or consolidated yeah! plans, such as savings towards a house. Simple and easy to play. Visit www.yougoflip.com Buy a ticket to enter the game. Wait for the end of the game to enjoy the win. Anyone can win. Flip it or own it. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the Gaming Commission of Ghana. Play responsible, not for persons below 18 years, and gaming can be addictive. Welcome back. The point of view tonight is an economic analysis around the economy of Ghana in eight charts. We started with the municipal policy rate. 29.5% is very high. It's the highest since 2002. It peaks in election years, average of 18.5%. The higher it is, the, the worse it is for, for people who want to borrow from the banks because it's described as the short-term rate that banks lend to one another. 
So that's the first story. Second story, exchange rates. Ghana, you could buy the dollar for six cities in January 2022. By November of that year, you could buy it at almost 14 cities. Something went completely wrong. You can blame many things. The lead factor, of course, is the U.S. Fed and the things they did. And there were also speculative activities in Ghana. And that really threw the cat among the pigeons. It's recovered a bit. You can buy the dollar at 11. It's a big, big challenge. The third one was a real composite index of economic activity, a short-term look at the health of the economy. For some reason, from August 2022, things have gone southwards. Mind you, the IMF program was announced in July, and from August, things just went southwards. We've put the two together, and the story is not looking very good. We also showed in retail sales and VAT. Retail sales are flat. VAT is doing well. It could have potential consequences in the future. GR is doing all the, the EVAT. Fantastic. Job adverts coming down. Not good. You want more jobs to be advertised. So the economy is not doing well. And that real CEIE links to jobs. Because if the economy is not growing, people are not going to get jobs. Which is why the two are related. We just showed you port activity. And we read a story from the Herald. Explain why our port activity is going south. People are sending their goods from Europe through Togo. Some are using Ivory Coast because our charges are too many. The next one is cement sales. Now, cement is important because in the industrial sector, there's construction, there's manufacturing. Construction is very important. Now, construction happens in many fronts. One of the best ways of measuring construction growth is cement. So we have Gassem, Dangote cement, Jata cement, Diamond cement. These guys have accurate records of how much cement they, they sell. The more cement they sell, you can't build in Ghana without cement. Of course you can't, but most projects use cement, right? So the more cement you sell, the better your prediction of construction sector growth. So it's a proxy. So when you see cement sales coming down, look at that. So again, 2021, a bit below 350,000 tons, went up a bit, keeps coming down. 2022 went up a bit. Look at it. Cement sales all the way down. People are not buying cement. Why? Well, we will find out. So activity in the construction sector is proxied by volume of cement sales. Declined by almost 30% year on year in March. Right? So if you compare March 2022 to March 2023, cement sales dipped by 30%. This is, this is not good. This is not good. Right? What is going on with the economy? From... 366 to 258. And on a month-to-month month month basis, so we compare year-to-year, month-on-month basis, cement sales did improve in March by 13% from February. So there's some recovery. So that's what you see here. So it's going up a bit. But the trend is down. So we look at the month-on-month month to tell us what is changing within the month. So February to March, people were buying more cement. But as a whole... From 2021, there's less cement being bought. It's not a good story. So we need to find out from the works and housing people, the roads construction people. The, the Minister of Roads today said we're going to build 50 bridges. Well, we need to see more construction. Lots of projects have stalled. Apart from the Flowerpot project, a lot of the major project interchanges, the Bechebilamte project, the Sofo line interchange, no, the, the, the Suyami interchange, has it even started? The Takradi interchange, what's happening there? A lot of the road projects seem to have stalled. Yes, the Botema one is going on well, but many of them are not moving quickly enough. And that construction is part of this story. All right, so that's not good. But I want to end on a high. There are some things that are good for us. One of the reasons why city promotes tourism, one of the reasons why we do heritage caravan, is that we think that the tourism sector's potential to drive economic growth is very powerful. Now, the tourism sector is powerful because... When you visit a tourist center in a village, it's the villagers who get employed. All the men doesn't come to Accra. When you go to Kakum Park, when you go to Moli National Park, when you go to Babin Fiamma Monkey Sanctuary, when you go to the Tafiatome Monkey Sanctuary, you are spending money in a rural community. It's a fantastic sector. It has tour guides, it has hotels, it has food. It's a fantastic sector. Of all the charts that we saw, the best one is passenger arrivals. Look at that. So this is COVID-19. After COVID, nobody's traveling. So 
Less than 40,000 passengers came to Ghana in 2021, January. By August, by uh, July, 60,000. By end of 2021, 80,000. Of course, this is Christmas. Came down, 2022, July, 90,000. 2023, Christmas, over 100,000. So it means that there is potential. When people come to Ghana, they spend money. Whether they are from the US, UK, wherever, they spend money. This is very good. So there, there is a direct correlation between this and tourism revenue. In fact, the Ghana Tourist Authority released a list just last week showing that tourism holds a great potential. And interesting, the president was at Pediatrician to promote the president's tourism initiative. We are excited about that. Because that sector holds a lot of promise because of its multiplier effect, because of its pro-poor angles, and because there's even infrastructure. Because if you have to go to Blue Waterfalls and the road is bad, you can convince the government to say, look, we are going to get 200,000 visitors into the country by end of next year. If even 2% of those goes to Bli, you can improve the, the, the infrastructure. So in fact, there was a big discussion about linking infrastructure development to tourist sites. I think it's wonderful. So here is your, a good story to end the night for you. Look at it. Tourism, which depends, and this is external. And by the way, domestic tourism is also growing. As more people get money, as people, indeed, after COVID, we've seen an increase in tourism domestically because people realize that Charlie, they can die anytime. So because of the whole COVID thing, you have more people traveling. So the Heritage Caravan, for example, has seen increased patronage since 2019. 2020, 2021, the numbers have gone up. And we think that one of the easiest ways the government can restart our economy is to push tourism. So look at that. Passenger arrivals improved by 33.8% in year-on-year -year terms to 86,000 in March. So it jumped from 64 to 86, right? Compared to February, passenger arrivals went up by 15.4%. Awa, Makokriku Mante, and of course, Akwesia Jiman, you guys need to aggressively use this. This could be the key. Ghana has a strong brand in the diaspora community. A lot of people in the U.S., they see Ghana as the motherland that they came from. There's a lot of diasporans in Trinidad and Tobago, Jamaica, a lot of the Caribbean countries. Ghana is the first port of call. It's called the gateway to Africa for a reason. It's a friendly country. The people are nice. The weather is good. We are center of the world. That can earn us a lot more money. And we think that if the government is going to prioritize anything, Tourism must be one of those that it prioritizes. And we as an organization, we believe that, which is why we've been pushing tourism so aggressively. So this is a good, a, good, um, a good note to end on. Not all is negative. I didn't need to say that there are lots of charts we didn't show. For example, there's the inflation charts. You've seen a lot of them before. There's a very interesting chart we'll do next time when we compare banks to Momo because Momo is growing very well. The E-Levy affected Momo, though, but Momo is still growing nonetheless, and that could be unlucky. So maybe if the government is minded to increase revenue from that side, they may think of reviewing the e-levy to let Momo's unparalleled growth continue. Well, it's been a lot of talk for one night. We've been, told, we've been showing you eight charts that explain Ghana's economy, particularly when there's a lot of talk about IMF. We've spoken about the monetary policy rate, the exchange rate, the real composite index of economic activity. We've shown you retail sales and VAT, job adverts, cement, port, and finally, passenger arrivals, a very nice proxy for tourism. Thank you for watching the show. Please send us an email. Let's hear from you. If you disagree or agree with us, we'll see you next time with another show. Bye-bye. The Point of View is brought to you by Bellpack. Bellpack, just perfect.
day, the day of a competition. From the shores to the pools, to the beaches across the land, if you fancy yourself a competitive swimmer, this is for you. The City TV National Swimming Championships is happening on the 15th and the 16th of July 2023 at the Trust Sports Emporium. To register, WhatsApp your name, age, and contact details to 0558-973-973 or call 0205-973-973. The City TV National Swimming Championships is brought to you by City TV with support from 97.3 City FM and the Ghana Swimming Association. Welcome to City Sports Roundup with me, Benjamin Inketia. Coming up, Black Stars head coach Chris Hilton expresses frustration and lack of cutting edge in drop goalers' draw against Madagascar. Also, Ghana's Black Meteors leave Egypt for Morocco on June 21 for the Anatomy Degree Afghanistan. 